today we are going to be talking about social media for realtors and obviously it will integrate with our investors and uh, pretty much anyone that's going to be watching this. Uh, social media is changing every single day. Things are changing every single day in the industry. Uh, so it's very important to stay on top of uh, what's new, what's fresh. Uh, for those of you that have seen several of our um, trainings from the last few weeks, they are all on our Facebook page as well as on our YouTube page. Uh, you can see them all there. They're streaming live uh, as well as recorded copies at the end of the presentation will be posted there. So again, we are uh, joined today by Karen Michaels with our Fidelity partner, who is one of our national underwriters, and we appreciate them putting this list of trainings together uh, that we have presented to you over the last five weeks. For those of you that are interested in more trainings, please reach out to me and let me know. I don't want to overwhelm you now that we're getting back open and getting back to business a little bit. I don't want to overwhelm you with so many uh, Zoom calls, but if there's a topic you're interested in, you'd like to see, please let us know and, and I will talk with Karen and see what type of trainings we have that we can bring to you uh, maybe every couple of weeks. Uh, so again, Karen, thank you for joining us today, taking the time out of your day. Uh, and for those of you that have questions, please put them below in the chat box. Uh, you can also put them live on Facebook. We will try and get to them uh, either throughout or towards the end of the training. So without further ado, Karen, you may take it over. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I just to let you know, I did just roll out a bankruptcy class. Um, I know it's really exciting material, <laughs> but it's, you know, we've got a crazy world going on here. So, you know, tons of topics that we have available for trainings. But today we are going to talk about social media for realtors. Um, a lot of this information, I mean, clearly we are in a situation that has sort of brought the virtual world to the forefront more than it had been in real estate in terms of virtual open houses, you know, doing the Facebook live tours, um, virtual showings, even doing these go-to meeting or Zoom meetings to talk about contracts and closings and all of that. So if you do not have a social media account or if you have some platforms that you use but you're not really using them that often, now is the time to get those kind of up and running and polish them up. And, you know, we're going to go through tips and suggestions on what you can do, um, how you can get the best uh, return on your investment, so to speak, with these social media platforms. Um, one of the key things right off the back, it's, it's doing the interaction and doing the follow-up. I get uh, told all the time when I do this class, oh, I have every account and, you know, I put up stuff and I'm not getting any business from that. And, the, you know, the immediate question I have is, well, are you engaging with anyone? Are you liking posts? Are you, you know, thanking people? And it's always no. And that's really the key with any social media platform is, yeah, you can have you know, Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook, but if you're not really active with it, it's not going to do anything. So we're going to talk about all of this stuff, time management tools, resources, all that fun, all those fun things. So to get started, why use social media for marketing? It's the primary platform for marketing innovations. It's no longer an option for any business, including real estate. You have to have a social media platform. We are dealing with, you know, this is how people find you. This is how people meet you the first time is through social media. Uh, just a quick little thing, as of 2020, 79% of Americans have a social media profile. So that's pretty much, you know, a wide variety of people. They have at least one. Facebook's probably the biggest one. So this number is up from around 50% in 2011. Probably going to increase growing as, this was probably, this statistics was back like in January. You got to imagine now after um, everyone's been at home working from home, there's probably, it's, the numbers probably increased, but know that, you know, you've got majority of Americans have a social media platform. And so it's very important that you have one in the business sense. Um, why use it? It's a variety of social media outlets for images is a way to locate listing buyers may be more interested in. And as we've seen with the, um, COVID-19 and the stay-at-home orders, we've seen like an uptick in how many people are looking at homes online. Um, March 20th of this year, 
uh, Zillow reported a 326% increase in viewers looking at their houses or going on to Zillow. So this is huge. You, you know, you've got a lot of media presence and that's what people are doing then is they'll look at a house and then they're going to look at the realtor and they're going to want to see who is this person before I do business with them. And that's the whole key behind social media. Um, a lot of, you know, I think it's 98% of people are looking online for homes uh, before they even contact a realtor. That actually went up from 50%. So where are they looking? Instagram, Facebook, Trulia, Zillow, and then review site Yelp. And we're going to talk about reviews because that's a really important piece to um, your social media account as well. Oops. So other things, it's going to offer a glimpse into your realtor style, how quickly you sell your properties, and how clients feel about them. Those are the key things. I always liken these social media platforms, and it's cheesy, but it's true. It's like an online dating service. You are presenting yourself on your Facebook, Instagram, whatever, as whoever you are. You need to be as authentic as possible. And then when you finally meet the person, your potential buyer or seller, you need to be that person that they've seen on that social media platform um, because otherwise you just lose credibility. And it's like online dating. I don't know if anyone's ever done it, but you know, I have, that's fun. And you people post pictures from high school and you meet them, I'm like, no, 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 nowhere near that. And right then and there, it's like, I'm not interested in this because you've already, you know, you're not being authentic. Um, it helps people save time on what they want and who can best help them. Opportunity to be more informed about what's out there. And then it's cheaper than print media. Um, print media still, you know, the um, the just sold home cards or properties listed in your area, they're still useful, but you can do a lot of reach out or outreach through social media a lot cheaper than actually printing stuff. Um, and it's more environmentally sound. And when we're talking about who's the biggest buyer group, that's going to be important to them. Social media used by gen users by generation. 90.4% of millennials use social media. You get 77% of Gen X and then 48% of baby boomers. And why is that important? Because 36% of all home buyers are millennials. Um, they are the largest group of buyers nationally. They are also the largest group of first time home buyers. They, uh, do we have that statistic? Yeah, they, they have, it's something like 98.6% have um, smartphones and they use all of the apps, all of the social media profiles. So just to give you an idea of what's out there in terms of social platforms, obviously Facebook, Facebook is the largest um, platform out there. YouTube, huge and we're going to talk about the YouTube. We're going to talk about some of these, not all of these, but Facebook, YouTube, you've got Instagram up there and Twitter down closer to the bottom. But those are some of the ones that are really going to help you in terms of um, growing your business and reaching people and getting people to know who you are. So this is what we're going to talk about. The six quick and easy steps to get started. And like I said, even if you have a social media platform or you're using a bunch of them, Take a step back and think about these things because it can change what you're doing and how you're approaching it. I think everyone has a Facebook account that I know, but I never, you know, I have friends that are realtors and I don't see them doing anything with it. And that's a detriment to them because even though I'm not, may not be interested in buying a house in their market or at all, at least I, I have, you know, 200, 300 friends that I can let them know if there's, if I know someone's interested in buying and that's, it's simple, easy referral thing like that can um, can help you grow your business. So we're going to talk about establishing goals, picking the platforms, developing a content plan, optimizing your profile, the schedule interacting monitor. That's the big piece that I think a lot of people skip over and then tracking and measuring your success. So the first question you want to ask is what do I want to get out of my social media efforts? And there are a bunch of different sort of um, 
uh, questionnaires and, and things you can find on Google that will kind of help you narrow down like how you want to brand yourself, all of that kind of thing. But really, what do you want to do? You want to deepen existing relationships. You want to highlight your character and competence. You want to stay at the top of people minds of people in your database. Because once again, you know, nine out of 10 um, people or nine out of 10 referrals or 90% of realtor business comes from referrals is what I'm trying to say, peer recommendations, I should say. So all of these things, once again, you're posting strategically and constantly and consistently, you're staying at the tops of people's minds. And that's when it's like, oh yeah, my friend was asking about buying a house, here's Susie Realtor. Um, and these are all the things you wanna do. Or you ha might have other goals. You have to decide that for yourself, but truly it's, you have to, you know, figure out what you want to do and how you want to use social media. If you're really not interested in doing it, I think that's not a great idea, but there's things you, it's not like you have to be on it every single minute. There's so many tools and resources out there that you can, um, that'll save you time. So you want to pick your platforms. So if you already have Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all of that, then maybe, and you're not using all of them, maybe rethink how you're using them or focus really on just one. So maybe start with Facebook because you've got 67% of online adults say they use Facebook and work on that one and really get that sort of, you know, bright and shiny because the other nice thing with Facebook, you can post stuff directly from Instagram onto Facebook so you can use them as a dual kind of thing. So then once you've mastered one, you can move on to the other ones and, and kind of brush up on them. But if you wanna start something simple, basic, you can start with a Facebook account or take the one you have and just, we're gonna do these sort of things. So you're gonna develop a content plan. You want to provide value. You wanna encourage engagement and you wanna build trust. So going back to that, you know, online dating anal or an analogy, it truly is, this is the first time we're meeting people and especially now, because people aren't going to offices. You know, they're finding you online and then they do their research to see who is this person that I'm about to, you know, entrust with helping me find the biggest investment of my life. And that may be like, you know, blowing it out of proportion, but it truly is. I mean, this is how we find things. This is how all of us find businesses. You go on Angie's list, you do a Yelp review, you, you know, you want to find out about somebody, you're going to find their Facebook page or Instagram and you'll learn about them. And that's the whole point of the social media thing. This is your first, um, communication, your first introduction to a potential client, and you need to have um, value added items, whether it's educational or whatever. You want people to engage because that's the key to growing your uh, profiles. And then you have to build that trust. You have to be authentic. So some things you can articulate how you work, become a trusted advisor for your community and shows what that you care about their needs. That's the whole key. So the posting rules, 80% should be about lifestyle tips, other areas of your client's social interest, because that's going to draw them in. So you obviously have to be interested in it as well. Here's, it goes back to the authenticity. I'm going to say that a lot because I think it's a key that's missing from a lot of people's profiles. Cause it's like, oh, I've got to sh do all these things to try and get clients in. But then when they actually meet them, it's like, you're not that person that you pretended to be. So it can be things like, especially community lifestyles, like you going, you know, posting stuff about the local community. That's going to be important to people that want to move into that community. And then 20% really needs to be about your real estate agency and what services you can offer. Obviously, you need to talk about that. But in long-term things, I mean, what people want to know is you buy, you sell houses, your time frame's good, you get them top dollar. Or if you're, uh, you know, working on the selling agent side, that you're going to get them the best um, house for their money. All of those kind of things, that's what you want to promote. Uh, but it doesn't have to be, you know, 80% about, hey, I'm a realtor and this is what I do. You're going to lose interest. People need to get to know you through your social media platform. And that's why 80% is going to be about more about um, lifestyle things rather than your what you do as a realtor. Optimizing your profile. Really important. You want to make sure your profile is completely filled out with all your contact information. I, you know, I obviously am working from home now and 
during my in between all the webinars I'm doing I'll go on the internet and I'm like I just I want to order food from a restaurant but I don't I've never been to this restaurant so all they have is a Facebook page guess what there's no phone number on this Facebook page there, there's no menu there's all it's like all these things that are missing it's like I, why do I'm not going to go there. I don't know anything about this place. I, there's no reviews. All of those things have now become really important to a lot of people. So make sure that you have your phone number, your email address, you know, your website, links to your other social media accounts so that people can learn more about you and get in touch with you. You want to make it personable. So it isn't all... Um, you know, you can have a personal page, you can have a professional page. You can have a, you know, whatever you're posting on there, just know that you, or you can block people on certain things for your professional page, whatever you want to do. But whatever you're doing, it has to be um, professional in, in the manner that you're not, you know, if you're posting it out to the world, you're not, it's not you doing beer bongs or something like that. But it needs to be personal, but personable enough because this is the first time someone's getting to know you. Content is accurate, um, up-to-date professional photo. Hey, listen, I am notorious at this. My headshot is like 15 years old. I admit it, it's a pain. Nobody wants to go get a professional headshot done. It's, I don't, I just, it's the time thing. They keep yelling me at a fidelity, like, can we get you a new headshot? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I'd have to go someplace and now we're just lazy. So, but this goes back to, that authenticity because you have a professional headshot photo that's 10 years old on your any of your social media profiles and now you go to meet this person um, your potential client in person and you're not the face that's on your social media platform and that's once again goes back to that do I trust you it is so important to have an up-to-date professional photo you want your links to your website, and then you want to have some details of your real estate biz, like I said, 20%, with success stories and all of that good stuff. This is the big one, the schedule interacting, scheduling, interacting, and monitoring. Um, so first of all, you want to think about what types of posts you want to make. And my suggestion is look at the top producers in your area see what they're posting about what are they getting likes and shares and comments on and you know copy it i mean don't take it and copy it but find things like that because that's what's engaging to other people but on the flip side it has to be something you're interested in too because once again this is how we're meeting people um, some posts should be reoccurring, others one time. Once again, look at the that competitor, see what they're posting. What are they posting once? What are they po posting consistently? And then you want to think in cat categories in terms of listing buyers, sellers, local community. Who are you targeting? Who are you marketing to? You want to commit to a posting schedule. Uh, whether it's you know Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three o'clock whatever it is, you want to post when your audience is online and it's going to take time to figure out that sweet spot. And it's going to depend on the generation. So uh, National Association of Realtors every year does a generational study about who's buying and selling and what their needs and wants and all that and likes and all that kind of stuff. Um, so like I said, you've got millennials are the largest group of buyers. If that's who you want to target, you got to figure out when they're going to be online and looking at their Facebook accounts or Instagram, probably Instagram, not Facebook. Or if you're targeting Gen X, when's the best time to target them um, or post because that's when it's going to pull up in their feed. And right now, I mean, I don't know if you guys have you know, if you look at Facebook or whatever on a daily basis, but it's just inundated, not only with ads, but there's, you know, you've got crazy posters that post, there's a lot of political stuff going on. So you've got to figure out, you know, does, is someone going to weed through that? Oops, excuse me. Or um, are they going to weed through all of this stuff to find your post? Or what time do you need to post to get at the top of that? Um, because it's always going to come up top stories, right? Testing different posting times to find that sweet spot for engagement. Consistency is key with social media. This is the other thing I hear all the time. I, you know, I've tried posting 
twice a week for a month and nothing happened. It takes time. You have to build an audience. Um, you have to get your friends and family to get other friends and fam or their friends and family to like your page. It, you know, this is marketing. This is not just, oh, I have one and it's not working. It's not, it's like if you printed a bunch of brochures and then left them in your office and did nothing with them. That's what just having a social media profile and doing nothing with it is. Um, and you have to be consistent about it. People have to expect that they're going to see a post from you on a certain day, certain time. So make a plan to post a certain number of days every week. There are tools, and we're going to talk about those, that will do that for you. You say, I want something posted one day, Wednesday, Friday. You can give the content. You can buy content from them, all sorts of things, and they'll post for you. Your job is to go back and make sure that you're monitoring it and doing something with it. So an easy start, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening, um, just to check your, check your accounts and respond um, to comments, like shares, messages, whatever it is. Interacting. So to deepen trust and build confidence, you must interact. Retweet something, comment on something, like, share. Thank those who've done the same for you. If somebody likes something of yours, reach out to them. Thank them for liking it. I know it's cheesy, but this is marketing. This is sales. You as a realtor are selling yourself. Um, that sounded terrible, but you know what I mean. And comments. If somebody's commenting, you want to respond. All of these things, you have to interact. Uh, it's important to even when we're talking about... Um, like virtual open houses, which seems to be the trend. If you're doing a Facebook Live and you're walking around doing an open house and people are asking questions and you're not answering them, there's just do a video and post it on YouTube or something. You need to interact. You need to be engaged with people. Uh, sharing content for local people. So people viewing your properties are likely to be in the same area. We all want to see what's for sale in our neighborhood. So you want to share local interest things, local events and news, info and local property price changes, um, you know, local events that are happening that you might be a part of, especially um, when you're talking about like marketing towards millennials, they want to see that you are uh, um, doing stuff in the local community, you're volunteering, whatever it is. 46 of Americans use social media as a news source, so contributing to the local social world helps you get your foot in the door. Monitoring. So using social media metrics to identify and track what's working through likes, shares, and number of followers. As if no one's liking your stuff, rethink what you're posting. If you know, you're getting no shares, same thing. You want to get all of that. That's how you play the game in the social media world. So every month, every you know, in the beginning, I would say every week, you want to see what best times are to post, what types of posts generate the most reach. Are they quotes? Are they photos? Are they videos? Are they your listing? You don't want to just put all your listings up there as a post. You want content. You want educational stuff. You want to show people that you are... Um, that you are engaging with them. So common social media mistakes being hard to find. Like I said, you have to have at least one social media. Uh, oops, sorry. Yes, Kevin, I did record. I just saw your message. <laughs> I am multitasking right now. So being hard to find. Because once again, this is your first impression to a potential client. You need to be able, you know, they Google your name, you, you better pop up. Uh, not having profiles properly filled out, like I said, make sure all of your contact info is in there. Not checking the analytics, not seeing what's working. You know, when we're talking about like even Facebook ads, you know, are, are these working or not? You're spending money. You know, social media is free unless you're doing ads and things like that. So, you know, if it's not working, you have to rethink it not engaging with other accounts. So even though you're posting something you're looking, is anyone liking this? Is anyone sharing this? You have to engage with other people. You know, you have to like other people's things, um, comment on and share on that or share them because that's going to give you more of an audience that brings people into your, um, your little realm of social media platforms. Ignoring comments, negative or positive. I can't tell you enough 
so when we talk about millennials being the largest group of buyers, we also call them the Yelp generation. They don't make a decision without looking at Yelp reviews. I don't make a decision without looking at Yelp reviews, to be honest with you, and I'm not a millennial. Um, and one of the things that I can say personally drives me nuts is if I say someone post a negative comment about a business and that business doesn't respond. It tells me A, they're not checking their profiles or B, they don't care. Um, if you get a negative comment on any of your sites, you need to respond to it. You need to respond to it professionally, you know, acknowledge if they're whatever it is. Um, and we did have, I did have one realtor that they were actually being trolled by a 13 year old kid that was writing negative comments left and right. And they were, they were able to, uh, they, they kept answering it and it was awesome. And I mean, they were finally able to remove it, but it was like, and like, if you never, even if you thought it was a troll, you need to respond to it. Same with positive comments. You want to thank people, you know, ask them for a referral, whatever it is. Um, you have to be engaged. So social media platforms and time, um, this is truly, this number's probably gone up because over the past, you know, three months, everyone's been home. But you've got YouTube about 40 minutes a day, 35 minutes Facebook, 15 minutes Instagram. Um, so let's start with Facebook because that's the biggest one, probably the easiest one to use. Um, easiest one to set up and there's a lot of tools that are on it and like I said it integrates with Instagram so uh, you can share things back and forth. So you want to use to communicate general real estate intel happening in the community statistics, home decorating tips, style guidelines. Obviously you want to put uh, postings of your listings as well. It just can't be every single post. Um, People want to see that you have community mindness, mindedness, you're a thought leader rather than just a marketer. So that's why you don't want to post just your listings. You've got to provide some other sort of content. Once again, easiest thing to do, look at what your top competitors are doing. Or, you know, maybe they're not doing anything on social media. Find some that are, are successful on it. If you have friends that are realtors that are successful, find out what they're doing. Start following them and, and mimic it, truthfully. You don't have to recreate the wheel on a lot of the stuff. Post ideas. Just some ideas that you can think about outside of just your listing. Real estate tips related to buying and selling homes for inexperienced individuals. So like I said, 50% of millennials are first time home buyers. They've never ever bought a house. They have no idea what they're getting into. Um, you come in knight in shining armor, explaining to them, you know, the top five things you need to know when you're buying a house, top, you know, whatever it is, um, things to avoid, mistakes that can be made, you know, things you know to, need to know about getting a loan, whatever it is, that's gonna help them. Showcasing local, businesses and events happening in the community. Easiest, easiest, cheapest, freest marketing you can do is say, hey, local business, let's say it's the cupcake shop that you go to once a week. Do you mind if I promote you on my Facebook page? Would you do the same for me? That give and take quid pro quo is priceless. You get promoted on their uh, Facebook page or Instagram or whatever, now that's opened up to all their customers. Holding giveaways or contests to help build awareness and drive engagement. Um, you know, Amazon gift cards are great. Real estate stories and testimonials from previous buyers and sellers. I, that's like one of the number one things people look at. If you don't have any testimonials and reviews, and most people will do it. I mean, if they had a great experience, they'd be like, yeah, I'll do a short little video that says, you know, Suzy Realtor is fantastic. That's all it has to say. People want to see those things. They want to see that somebody used you, they liked you, and that's positive uh, marketing for you. Professional images and graphics of new homes. Um, there's so many things you can do with photography now. You can take a picture of a house and let's say there's a garbage can in the front yard. You can have that photoshopped out. Uh, people want to see like clean images and high quality resolution. And luckily, most of our smartphones are able to do that now. And if you have the access to photographers or whatever at your um, office, take advantage of them. So giving your audience value and awareness so when time comes, your real estate brand will be the first thing on their mind. And that's what it comes down to. It has to be something of value to them, whether it's the educational piece or whatever. Um, 
they want to know that you know you're trustworthy and that you're involved in the community you know what you're doing so some of the facebook tools that are out there live marketplace ads and groups live is the open house so i, I mean i think um I do a class on you know how to close things in the new norm and the first things we talk about is virtual open houses and how invaluable those are right now uh you don't you know sellers don't want people in their house you know tromping through um if it's vacant maybe not but even then as a realtor you know you have to keep social distancing you have to sanitize things you have to do all of that if you do a virtual open house you post it on um you can post it on the mls which is nice you know the url and then you can post it on your facebook live invite everybody let everyone in your contacts know that you're doing a facebook live open house people love open houses they love going through the houses um, and then you're just doing a home tour and interacting with people q a session during or after or whenever you want to do it if you've never done one um practice on your own house invite you can do a zoom meeting like we're doing and invite um or Facebook Live, if you probably don't want to go live just then, but you can do a Zoom meeting and invite your friends, just like, hey, I, I need to practice doing an open house with you asking questions while I'm doing it. And you get, you know, the feel of how it's going to be. So practice it. It's, it's a tool you'll, you're going to need for a while now. I know um, I haven't seen any open houses yet. Um, I don't know if they're going to be, a, you know, coming back anytime soon. Uh, the virtual open houses are so much safer for everybody anyway. So get used to doing them, practice on them. And that way, when you go live on Facebook, you'll be, you know, perfectly comfortable and okay with it. You've got Facebook Marketplace, and this is where you can um, put your listings. Uh, you want to make sure you have, de you know, listings, links to your websites and all that. Um, uh, they can send messages through the marketplace to you on the listings or anything about you if you want and then you have to make that connection now so if people are liking stuff or they're looking at it um you need to follow up with it if the follow-up is really the key i cannot stress that enough uh like i said you know social media you nobody's liking your stuff you need to redo it if people are liking your stuff you've got to interact with them you got Facebook Marketplace and groups, so you can buy and sell. You can there's buy and sell groups. You can post your listings, um, so you can post a listing to a marketplace and then specify a buy and sell group simultaneous. Facebook groups. You have over one billion people use at least one Facebook group. You can do search location plus neighborhood and Facebook search, then hit groups tab. You can create your own. So if you want to market or uh, just in like a certain area, you can do that. You can create your own Facebook group. There's a thousand million Facebook groups out there um, and you can join a bunch and post your listings or engage with people through that. And that opens you up to people outside of just your contacts um, on Facebook and Instagram. Facebook ads, yes, your paid social media. So the price is gonna vary on what you want done, how long you want the ad run for what you're targeting so you can target by age demographic um, certain audiences behavior behavioral targeting targeting oh my goodness those likely to move so as you know because this happens to all of us like i was looking at furniture uh whatever last week on and all of a sudden every ad that is now on facebook every time i pull up like i want to read cnn or you know, Orlando Sentinel or something, it's all furniture ads because <laughs> they they know that I've been looking and now I'm being targeted for furniture. Um, it's the same thing with Facebook ads. They're like, oh, someone clicked on a house, boom, guess what? Here's a target or here's a targeted ad. Um, and once again, you can, the other cool thing is talking about that generational sales, um, so it's 25% uh, of um, the silent generation, which is the, I think they were born, was it 19, uh, before 1940, no, before 1945, that's it. So they're this generation before baby boomers. 25% um, 
they're the largest group that are moving out of state because obviously they're up north, they're moving down to Florida, Arizona, warm states. You can target that whole group, like, you know, the villages or whatever it is. Um, or you can target, you know, the millennials if that's your, if you, they'll pick it by that age group. Um, you can't pick by uh, income anymore. I know that's off the plate, but you can look at all of these things. And once again, it's like, well, where's my return on my investment? You'll find out, you know, are you getting likes, ads, shares, comments? Um, you have to interact though. I have so many people that are like, yeah, I've done this and I got nothing from it. No one's calling me. Well, no, you have to make the first move technically. Um, you wanna be transparent, realistic imagery up your ad spending during peak times and you'll be able to figure that out. Facebook will track a lot of that for you. You want uh, testimonies and reviews attached to any ads you're doing, high quality images and videos. LinkedIn, um, everyone's like, why would I do anything on LinkedIn? Because one in three professionals have a LinkedIn account. It's for business to business referrals. It's a great, you can market on LinkedIn. There's so many, I have some ridiculous, like 3,500 LinkedIn contacts. I don't know who half these people are, but <laughs> every once in a while I'll get like a realtor that I'm became uh, you know connected with on LinkedIn posting something like oh that's interesting especially if it's like data especially if it's a blog uh, most if I think it's something like um, 50 percent of baby boomers read blogs for information so blogging we're going to talk more about that it doesn't have to be I have to sit down every day and write like a whole monologue or something. No, a blog can be you commenting on an article. It doesn't have to be this whole thing. Um, you know, giving some details, some breakdown of it. But LinkedIn is still a really good resource. There's so many people on it. And even, you know, business people do buy houses. We all buy houses and sell houses. So why not market on there as well and have a platform there? YouTube, you have 1 billion users monthly, almost a third of all the people on the internet. 5 billion videos are watched daily. 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. This is a beast. Um, you, so they said, Google study found that 85% of participants in real estate transactions want agents who use video in their work. Here's the thing. The nice thing about like doing a Facebook Live open house, you can post that then to YouTube. You know, Kevin's posting these uh, trainings and stuff to his YouTube account. YouTube is not just cats playing piano or whatever other crazy stuff is out there. Justin Bieber, whoever was found on YouTube. There is so much good educational stuff out there. Kevin puts, I've seen um, actually Kevin's um, some of his educational training videos that he's has so you, you can learn a lot and this is a great tool for you to a uh, tool for you as a realtor to not only showcase who you are your houses you're selling but that you're knowledgeable and that's goes back to our very beginning that's what people are trying to find out are, are you going to do a good job for me great you're a realtor there's a million realtors how are you going to work for me and that's what we're gonna find out. So this is why YouTube is so important because they get to know you even more because they're going to see you talking and interacting and um, teaching them something. So you can do a dedicated channel with neighborhood tours and engage in videos of your listing. Uh, neighborhood tours are, people want to go see what's happening. They want, you know, I. so I live near Winter Park. You know, don't, that little walk down Winter Park is adorable if you've ever been up here. Um, people will watch that, they wanna see, what, you know, hey, I've never been, I'd like to go check it out. Showing client testimonials, so vitally important. We're gonna talk about that later, but I just, I can't say enough about, if you have someone that's had a good experience, just ask if they can do a five second, Susie Realtor was awesome, I would use her again, whatever it is. FAQs, educational videos, um, millennials, largest group of new home buyers, Here's a short video on, you know, what you need to know about buying a house. Then most important is a video about yourself. You still are selling who you are. Twitter. Twitter is, <laughs> gotten a little political, but you can use it for, especially for using, for sharing listings, advice on moving, tips for staging homes, stats and links to real estate information. 
you can have news and blogs and it's all about how you know the hashtags you're using and the volume of tweets and we're going to talk about hashtags in a little bit but that's pretty much what twitter is you need to know how to you know what you're posting and then what you're tagging it with instagram this is growing i think most millennials are on instagram um don't call it the ig that's all i know <laughs> So you've got more than 700 million users. It's accessible on mobile devices, so you have higher levels of engagement since all of us stare at our smartphones, you know, 97% of the day. You can show off pictures of the community. You can show specific listings. Uh, best, it's the best sh site for showing dynamic visuals of properties. You can do the Instagram stories, you know, the short little, um, video things that pop up at the top of the Instagram feed. Uh, any video you do, they recommend 15 to 60 seconds top because we've got a, um, a one of the generational uh, studies from National Association of Realtors they came up with was the millennials have a 12 second attention span and Gen Z, which is the generation following them, has eight second attention span. So the shorter the video, the better. That's why those little Vine things are so popular because they're quick and then they're gone. Uh, okay, so showcasing community lifestyle, sharp property features tagged with photo maps. You know, you know what to post on. People want to see pictures of food too. So, you know, favorite restaurants, things like that, promoting your local community, do that on Instagram as well as promoting, you know, what you are selling. Okay, so hashtags, videos, and blogging. Hashtags used for a variety of relevant researched hashtags. Um, if you type in hashtags for real estate, it's going to pull up 8 million different kinds of hashtags. This all goes back once again to how you are marketing, who you are marketing to, what your goal is. So play around with it. You can um, check out, like I said, what your top competitors are doing. What are they using? You don't want to overdo it. I'm sure you've seen it where there's like 8 million hashtags. You know, keep it to a strategic minimum. You can create your own hashtags doing that keyword search to see what's most relevant to the real estate brand and location that you're in um, and then experimenting changing up what you need to do so that's going to be the key with hashtags there are a million out there um, and you can i think i have it in here yeah so we've got types of hashtags so these are the generic ones shared with anyone with a shared interest these are the ones that if you type in real estate hashtags this is what comes up hashtag real estate hashtag realtor hashtag just listed hashtag home for sale so throw one of those in there you know just to kind of keep it general but then you can also do a real estate agent hashtags um or customizing them to your neighborhood to you know you want to absolutely put your brokerage name in it, uh, your target city, the zip code, whatever it is. So now you go from generic down to more of a customized. That's kind of your focus. And you have to play around with it because it all comes down to, you know, who you're marketing to, what they're looking at. And I can't stress enough checking out what your competitors are doing, the successful ones. Let me say, put it that way. Um, real estate video marketing. 97% of marketers say video has helped increase user understanding of their product or service. 76% says it's increased sales. 76% experienced more inquiries. And this is my favorite one. Listings with a video received 403% more inquiries than those without. So it doesn't have to be a drone. It's you with your smartphone walking through a house. It can be a 360 tour. All of these are videos. So how to use more videos. Introductions are about us. Videos, like I said, a video about yourself, who you are. Uh, my friend is a realtor in Dallas and she just did a really short little, I don't know, 20 second thing about how, you know, she just wants to help people grow and helping them grow into new homes and things like that. And it was really sweet and it's posted on all of her social media sites and her website. And it really shows cases who she is because I know her. So it's like, oh, that's exactly how Jan is. Um, listing video are coming soon. In-person video, virtual open houses. We've talked about those. Facebook Live, Instagram, Snapchat, or YouTube stories. Community or local business highlights and reviews. 
drone video marketing, educational videos are priceless, testimonials priceless, market updates, all of that stuff. Just some ideas on how to use more videos in your marketing. Blogging, this is, so blogs, the whole point of it is, is once again, the educational piece and showing people that you are an expert in your field, that you understand the real estate market, you understand buying and selling, you understand negotiating a contract, you understand getting the best dollar for your seller or the best deal for your buyer. That's the whole point of blogging. There's so much information out there. There's so many blogs, but a lot of people read blogs, like I said, for like news. Um, um, there's, if you want to look at good quality blogs in real estate, there's Inman, I-N-M-A-N, real estate. Um, they're a national uh, realtor group and they have a whole blog site that's fantastic. There's also Zillow blog. Um, there's also some uh, law firms and or not law firms brokerages that have their own that are pretty good so do some research on it see what people are blogging about see what people are interested in you'll if you are um, on LinkedIn you can find blogs on there too and you see what people are commenting on liking that's all important like like I said you don't necessarily have to recreate the wheel if you're not a good writer you can you know there's you can buy content for blogs um, there's so many things you can do, but it really is, it has to be something you're interested in too and you're, you know about because you'll get called out on it. If somebody says, oh, wow, you know, I read your blog. That was really great. And you're like, yeah. And then they ask you a question about it and you have no idea. That's not, you lose that, inauth that authenticity again. Um, so that you, being authentic throughout the whole process is going to be important. And especially when you're talking about these social media sites. Uh, tracks new prospects to your website and social channels. Um, some blog post ideas, articles on market predictions and market stats, <clears throat> tips for homeowners and what they should know when buying or selling, posts about the neighborhood and info about the community, and then what would you want to know? Uh, you know, what interests you? And it could be you're interested in dogs, <laughs> right? About dogs. That's going to showcase who you are to a lot of people. Time management. So they say, um, the experts, that it takes about six hours a week to successfully market on social media platforms. Mm. So there are tools, oops, went too fast, tools for time management. There's free stock photos. Here's a, a list of, um, of websites and places you can get free stock photos, you know, to fancy up your websites and your social media platforms. Creating real estate market graphics, infographics will, you know, they do little marketing flyers, things like that. Um, some are free, some aren't. You've got CRM platforms, the client relation management platforms. These are really important to have if any sales and marketing. Um, Salesforce is one I use. Um, there is a fee for it. HubSpot is free. Uh, but all they do is they take all your contacts and the nice things you can do, mail, email campaigns, you can do, um, you can put in anniversary dates or birth dates or whatever it is, and it'll automatically send emails. It does, I mean, it's just, it'll keep track of who your uh, top buyers are, top sellers, who your influencers are, all of those things that you need to do if you're going to be successful in marketing anyway. Um, so check it out if you don't have it. You know, if you're just using a spreadsheet, the e you can you can upload those um, right into Salesforce or HubSpot, and it just keeps track of all the clients. And they say if you to successfully run a CRM, you should be putting at least five new contacts in it a day, and that's everybody. That's the dentist. That's somebody you meet. You know at a restaurant, whatever it is, you get their card, you're putting them in your CRM and you you can do um, all kinds of things and just keeping in touch with them because you are a realtor. Somebody knows somebody that wants to buy or sell a house. Uh, automating real estate social media marketing posts. So like I said, you know, it's like, oh God, I have to go on here every three days and think of something to post. 
Buffer and Hootsuite, they do that for you. You put in the dates and times you want to put stuff in. There's, you can put your own content in. You can buy content from them to post um, that they'll white label it with your name and all of that. So check those out as well. And they um, vary on price. Some of it's free, some of it's not. But once again, if you have the time to do it yourself, fantastic. But a lot of us don't. Um, and maybe, you know, now's the time to get up and running and a lot of the stuff and see if you can manage it on your own. Because once you get it kind of going and you can, man you'll figure out how to do your own time management with it. Testimonials and reviews. Nine out of 10 buying decisions are made with peer recommendations. And by peer recommendations, I'm not talking about, I actually know the person. I'm talking about someone wrote a review on Yelp on Amazon and I'm reading it and that's a peer recommendation. Testimonials are trust signals. So I don't even know this person. They're telling me this is the best, best product they ever used. I'm like, okay, I'm going to trust their opinion. That's how the world works these days. 62% um, of online home buyers said they're likely to contact an agent if they have excellent reviews. So here's my little advice for you. Google yourself and see what comes up. See what kind of reviews are out there on you because there's, um, well, I have a whole list of where you can look, but like Yelp, all kinds of things where your name might pop up. You need to see what's out there. If you don't have anything, get some. Ask your friends, family, you know, former clients, whoever it is, current clients to review you because people want to see who you are, what you're doing, if people like you. And funny fact is, if you have five-star reviews across the board, it seems more <laughs> less authentic than if you have like, you're only four stars because, or 4.5, because it, somebody was slightly unhappy and that's human nature. Um, so pay attention to that, check it out, see what you've got going on and like, and because you might have a bunch of bad reviews and you're not paying any attention. And like I said, you know, I'm looking at that going, this person does not care at all about their business. So take pride of your reviews. You want to put them everywhere, basically. Um, you want to update your reviews. Here's, you know, Facebook, Angie's List, Nextdoor, Zillow, all of them, Trulia, whatever it is check them out. If you don't have them, like I said, get them. You can ask if you have never closed a real estate transaction in your life, um, ask a colleague to write a review about your professional behavior. She's great. She shows up on time. She answers her phone calls immediately, whatever it is. That's all a positive review. All right, let's get to the do's and don'ts. You want to do clearly post your company's name and a link to your website on any social media platform. Um, do think through what you are considering posting. The internet is forever. So that means even though you've taken it down off your site, it's been forwarded, shared, whatever. Somebody else has it. It's everywhere. You want to post cons consistently and strategically, you know, like, oh, I tried it. I'm posting Monday this week, Friday the following week. It's not consistent. It's not strategic. Um, using your icons of social media accounts on your personal website and your signature line so there's easy access to them. Sharing your social media accounts with everyone you know. Responding to posts quickly, quick response to show that you're engaged and paying attention. So let's say you have um, Facebook Messenger, you're getting messages or, you know, middle of the night or something. Um, you know, see if you can do like a quick response, like, hey, I'm with a client right now. Let me, I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you have, here's my biggest pet peeve. You have a website and you have a, con fill out a contact thing. Someone fills it out and they never hear from you because it goes to some email that you never look at. Get rid of it. Have them email you directly or something like that. Because I'll tell you right now, you will lose business. Um, people don't pick up the phone and call anyone, you know, especially when you're talking about millennials. I mean, once again, these are all generalization, but millennials are not going to pick up the phone. They're going to text you um, or they're going to find you on Facebook and message you. Show your audience who you are and they'll feel more connected to you. Engage with everyone, positive, negative, whatever. Use one social media platform to drive traffic to another. And then remember to remove your listings on for sale sites when they're no longer available. If you don't do that, it's just, it's once again, you're just not that engaged. 
don't view your personal page as different from your business page. They are the same. Um, because if somebody Googles your name and they find that you have a personal Facebook page and now you're doing all this stuff that is completely different than your professional page, you've lost your that trust content with them. Don't get involved in online arguments. Like I said, crazy world, crazy times, too much stuff going on out there. Keep it fresh professional. Don't flood your follow followers with meaningless posts. Um, it, once again, going back to that being strategic about what you are posting. Look at what those competitors are doing. Don't oversell. You know, coming across as too promotional by only sharing links to your listings will be off-putting. They need to get to know who you are as a person. Remember, online dating. If you make customers unhappy in the physical world, they might each tell six friends. If you make customers unhappy on the internet, they can each tell 6,000 friends. So it's important to, you know, follow up, see what you're doing, be, have a good social media presence, you know, get good reviews out there because that's all going to spread throughout the internet. And I think that's all I have for you. So, uh, Kevin, do you want to add anything? Is there any questions? I mean, listen, I, I've taught a social media class for those of you that are listening. We have a bunch of people still on here. Uh, what I think about this one and the reason why we wanted to bring it to you is, is we have found that, you know, we do some of these a little bit more advanced social media classes and, you know, people walk off all fired up and ready to go and then they're stuck. Uh, right. So I think this one was great because this kind of gives the um, – basic overview of social media and and what needs to be done uh, a couple of things that that i look you know just was writing down in in my ideas and for those of you that are, are watching and have a pen and paper you can write them down i always tell people the first place to start is your directory listings as a real estate agent you need to start with your directory listings on zillow on google on facebook you know you want to set up your basic contact information pages first that is actually going to get you organic traffic when people search. If you use the right keywords, uh, there are ways to actually set it up properly. Uh, but you want to make sure you have your presence, which you touched on, which is great. But that is the first thing people should do. The second thing I like to tell people to do is set up the rest of your social media sites. So make sure not only your directory listings, but your social media sites. Because what happens is, is all of your social media sites link to all of your directory sites. Everything is like... Uh, when LinkedIn first came out, it's at six degrees of separation. So it's kind of like a web, the same thing with directory listings and social media is it's going to all um, spiral out and, and interconnect them all together to where someone looking for you on Zillow will be able to connect straight through your Facebook page and, and see you. The other thing are the reviews, which are super important. For those of you that saw on our Facebook the other day, I posted, I think, two Saturdays ago, there was someone trolling title companies and posting negative reviews for like eight or nine different title companies. And I'm like, either this is an upset title company looking to hurt people, or this, this agent is super busy, but had a really bad experience with eight different title companies and not one good experience. So it told me that this client was probably an angry competitor, which it happens and they'll do it to you, they do it to us. So I took one quick post, put it on social media and I got about 30 Google reviews just from that specifically. So, you know, there are a lot of things that organically you can bring all of the pieces to the puzzle together. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is YouTube. YouTube is super important. You can check out our YouTube videos. We post them all of the time. And, you know, the less edited, the better. The raw videos are great. People want to see that stuff. So you definitely want to take the time and set up a YouTube page and start putting things on there. Uh, it doesn't need to be these fancy 3D tours, although they're great. People want to see real deal. Go in front of a development and post something. Go in front of a local restaurant, like Karen said, and post a review. Uh, start posting reviews and be an expert in your community. Uh, one of our clients, John, who is on this uh, webinar, I know, and he watches on Facebook religiously, we gave him an idea in our last social media class where he talked about, you know, we gave him the idea of becoming the expert and hosting meetings within your development and bringing people together. And he gets so many listings. Unfortunately, it's in Broward County, so we don't get to be the title company, but he gets so many listings, it completely changed his life. 
just from you know these little tips and tricks on being a little bit more social and being a little bit more branded in order to build your business. So uh, again, I thank you for bringing this. You know, we do offer uh, as kind of a little side thing. We do offer some um, social media. Uh, let's let's call it coaching, if you'd like. Uh, we do charge a little bit for our time because we have found that more people will wind up leaving the events like this and not do anything. So we want to make sure you're committed and as well as just pay for our time. Um, but we are willing to sit down with you with our team and give you ideas on how you can get your social media to the next level. Because I found if you're going to go hire this one company local to do it, you're not going to get what you want. It's, this really takes the work of yourself to put into the social media. You need to put the sweat equity into this in order to build your, uh, your brand online like we have. So feel free to follow us and connect with us on social media. We are on pretty much every platform. We post tons of content, both business, personal, uh, pictures of dogs and cats. You know, we kind of cover it all because we found that, you know, what one person engages on one thing, another one will engage on something different. So uh, this was a great overview. And if you need to connect the dots and have any questions answered, like I said, feel free to connect with me, reach out. Uh, we're here to uh, answer any questions. And for those of you that posted, Karen will send me the video and I will post it on our YouTube channel because the audio was cut off at the beginning on Facebook. So I will post this full video on our YouTube channel as soon as she sends it to me, probably before four o'clock, uh, I'll try and get it posted for you. Uh, as well as all of the other seminars that we did for this five-week series. So again, thank you very much, Karen, for taking the time. Thank you for those of you that stayed on to uh, listen to this. And if you're looking to take your social media to the next level, reach out to us. We're happy to answer any questions uh, and help you out. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Michelle, you can just look up Independence Title uh, or Real Estate. Just Google my name on YouTube. You'll find us. Uh, put Independence Title in YouTube and you'll see us. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. And yeah, I will get this over to you shortly, Kevin. Perfect. Thank you so much. Stay safe, everyone. Remember, work hard, stay focused, and stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next call.